Hey everyone! In the last video, we took a look at how to install Playwright and run your tests using the VS Code extension. We also looked at how to debug your tests. In this video, we're going to look at how to generate tests based on your user actions using CodeGen. Let's take a look. So in our project, we can click on the testing icon, which will open up the testing toolbar. From here, we can click on Record New. Now what this does is it opens up a browser window and it also starts to create a test file called test1spec.ts. In here, we're importing test and expect from Playwright test. We're setting up that first test, importing that page fixture like we've seen in the previous video. Now from here, we can basically use the test generator to generate our test based on our user actions. I'm going to paste in a URL for the demo playwright.dev to do MVC app. I'm going to press Enter. Now over here in VS Code, it's already written that first line of code for me, await page .go to and the URL I, I pasted in. So from here, we can actually start to write some to-dos. For example, let's feed the dog and water the plants. We now have two to-dos in here, and you can see that they have been created in VS Code for us. No code written. CodeGen has done it all for us. Now let's click on feed the dog. The dog's been fed. That's great. And let's filter by the active ones and by the completed ones. Now if we go back here, we can see that we've got these written in here as well. So that's pretty good for a test. Let's press the cancel button to stop the recording and let's press save. Now we can run this test and it will pass. This is a pretty simple test, but you can see how it ran through those actions for us. Yet, actually, if you look at this test, we're not really testing anything. So we've only just recorded our user actions. Now we need to actually write some assertions. So for example, after we've checked the feed the dog and we've clicked on the active, we wanna make sure that there's only one that's active. So we could come along here and write in await, and we're going to use the expect library to expect that the page dot, and this is where I need my locator. So I want the page dot locator. Which locator do I want to test? I'm actually not sure. So if I'm not sure, what I can do is I can click on the pick locator. And what this will do is allow me to pick the right locator. So I want to make sure that there's only, look, it's highlighting the test ID to do title. Obviously, if I could click along here, I'm getting all these highlighted as I hover. This is the one I want. I want to make sure there's only one of those. Now, when I go back here in the pick locator box, this is highlighted. I can accept to copy the locator into the clipboard by pressing enter to confirm or escape to cancel. So I'm going to press enter. And then right here in VS Code, I can press paste. And I've got that expect page.getbytestid to do title. And what do I want it to do? I want it to have account. You can see all these assertions are here for us. So we want to have the count of one. We want there only to be one after we've clicked on the active. And we can actually assert this before it as well. Before we've actually checked this, there should be two. So let's put that in and let's run that test. That passes. So that's great. Um, what if we wanted to fail it? Just to make sure that that's passing, let's type in one there and let's run that test again. And now you can see Playwright is waiting. It's saying, uh, there's a problem here. I, I expected two, I, I expected one and I received two. So that's good. Our test is working. So you can come along here and bring that back to two. Now, this is great. This is an, a, a better test, but what if we wanted to have some more down here? What if we wanted to have, let's put, for example, here, we've got an account of one as well. And we wanted to make sure, say there was three of these and two for being active and one completed, etc. So we wanted to write another to do. We can do that by simply coming up here. And on this line here, we want to actually add another to do. We can do that by clicking on the record at cursor option. So what this does is, is it allows us to record in a specific place in our test. And we want to actually do the shopping. So I'm going to type that in here. 
I'll come back and it's actually pressed in to do the shopping right there before my assertion of to do to have count. So again, I'm gonna cancel that because we're happy with that. If I run this test, this test is going to fail right here in the two because we now have three items. So that's great. Let's change that to three. And I'm just gonna go over here and I'm gonna close this browser so you can see exactly as it's gonna pop up and it's gonna run that for me. Let's have a look. All those to-dos are in there. All my tests have passed. And um, this has been a really fantastic way of writing the test. But oh, look, it actually failed here. What happened? Well, remember we added that extra to-do? We added that extra to-do and now it's basically saying get by test ID to-do title one of two, one of two. So we have an error here after the active was clicked. When we clicked on the active, because we added that extra to-do, our test failed. So now we can come along here. We can change that to two. And if we run our test now again, our test has passed. So as you can see, it's very, very easy for us to generate a test based in our user actions, to use the pick locator, to easily pick a locator by hovering over and clicking any of the locators we want, which will save it up here into our pick locator box. And we can record a cursor in case we want to add to the test and record at a specific point in the test. And that's it. See you in the next video.